tutorial today, I'm going to show you how to do Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling in the Refinex GUI. The example we're going to use comes from the Refinex paper, uh, and it's scattering from a lipid bilayer in DITO, HDO, and HD mix. The paper itself is in the Journal of Applied Crystallography, and in the paper's supporting information, there is a Jupyter notebook, and that Jupyter notebook is executable itself uh, from a Jupyter Notebook server and you can reproduce the analysis that we're going to do uh, yourself from that Jupyter Notebook um, but we're going to actually do it in the GUI today the information that we're going to use for that is held in the Refinex Re uh, models git repository which is on github once you find this particular link go to the clone or download button. It will allow you to uh, download a zip. I've already done that and in that zip file are contained uh, three different, uh, the three different data sets. The Jupyter Notebook which you can uh, so you can do the reproducible analysis yourself but what I want is this MotoFit file and that's output from the Refinex GUI. The first thing that we're going to do is I want to fit as log R versus Q, so I'm going to change the lower limit of each of the background parameters to zero. Okay, that's done. You've seen here that the structure really is a, a bilayer, so we have the fronting medium which is silicon against silicon dioxide, an inner and outer leaflet of the bilayer, followed by the backing medium. And I sh showed how to set this up in another tutorial, uh, which is also on the YouTube Refinex channel, co-refinement of lipid bilayers at multiple contrasts. So we've got uh, the setup. The first thing that we're going to do is a fit as log R versus Q. And we're going to do it with differential evolution. Uh, this particular widget down here shows that we're co-refining all three data sets at once. So we click on go. It's going to go off and do, do the, uh, the differential evolution fit. The reason we're doing a differential evolution fit is so that the parameters are in a uh, in an optimal position. So this is uh, where the likelihood is highest. Or chi-squared is lowest, I guess. So chi-squared is coming down. All right, so these three data sets are quite well fit, quite well fitted, um, and then we have the corresponding scattering lab density profiles. We then uh, go to algorithm, choose Markov chain Monte Carlo, and click on go to do the MCMC. The first thing it comes up with is how we want to do the sampling. I want to do a total of 300 steps. Normally we'd do, say, I don't know, several thousand, I don't know, five, ten thousand or so on. Um, and the reason for that will become clear later. Um, there are 200 walkers. So in total there's going to be 200 times 300 uh, samples. By changing temperatures to be a value greater than one, you can do parallel tempering Monte Carlo or just straightforward Monte Carlo. Use parallel tempering if you're, uh, you're not quite sure uh, that you're close to the global minimum of the system or that you're, uh, or you're working in uh, an energy landscape that's while quite multimodal. Uh, the thin parameter I'm going to describe later. And the last choice is how to initialize the parameters or each of the walkers and that's either done from the prior distribution for all the parameters 
Uh, so, so the prior for say um, the scale factor here is a uniform distribution between 0.9 and 1.1. Or you can initialize from the covariance matrix, and that's what we're going to do today, because there each of the walkers is, is distributed in such a way that the covariance of those walkers would be the same as the covariance for the parameters. Or you could use jitter, and jitter is where each of the parameters is perturbed by a small amount. But covar is what we're going to use. When I click on go, we come up with a dialog to say, uh, where do you want to save uh, some output from the sampling process? I'm going to save it in that directory there. Click on open, and then once you start going, uh, it comes up with a dialog saying MCMC process and telling you how you're going. So if you look over here, this is the directory I said we we're going to save in. You see this file here, steps.chain. This is a file that contains the, uh, the walker positions for each of the steps. So this is all the Markov chain Monte Carlo being saved in that file. And it has the potential to be very large. You know, if you do many, many steps with many parameters, this file could be gigabytes large. Um, you can reduce the size of that file by thinning. Um, and we saw that the, uh, the we had the opportunity to change that thinning parameter um, earlier on. But I have to still yet explain what thinning is. Anyway, we're about two thirds of the way through the Markov chain in Monte Carlo now. You can see from the activity monitor that my process is working quite hard. So it's now finished, and it says we want to process the Markov chain Monte Carlo chain now. It's asking for a, a burn time, a thinning time. The total uh, samples is 60,000, and how many samples you want to use to plot. I want to explain what the burn and the thin time is here. So burn discards a certain number of samples from the start of the sampling process. So if you're, like this is the error per molecule parameter from the Jupyter notebook. Over here, the, all the chains are probably at an equilibrium. Uh, whereas at the start, they have to find their way through this maximum, I guess, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the final state. So in this situation, we'd probably want to discard 400 steps. Of course, we've only actually sampled 300 steps here, um, so I'm not going to actually burn anything. Um, so the burn is the total number of steps you discard from the start. And for this particular example, we'd want to probably discard 400. So we'd put in 400 there. Then the thinning parameter. Um, says how many samples you're actually going to save or, or how many samples you're going to accept. So for, uh, for each of the steps in this Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling process, uh, subsequent steps are correlated to the previous steps, uh, to the previous step. Um, and so at the zeroth step, you've not moved anywhere, so there's a perfect correlation. Uh, and then as you increase the number of steps, you, you start to lose track of where you originally started from. 
until after about 600 steps, uh, there is no relation in relationship between that particular location and where you started from. So in this particular situation, we'd probably want to thin by 400 to uh, so that all the samples that we uh, that we have are not correlated with each other. Um, of course, we've only done 300 steps here. So if I um, say thin by 10, that means we're only going to accept one in every 10 steps. In reality, we want to be uh, saving one in every 400. So this should really be 400, but we don't have we don't have enough steps to demonstrate that. Um, now, Refinex should come up with an estimated autocorrelation time as well, but we've not actually run for long enough uh, for that to, to be calculated. And finally, we can choose the number of plot samples, and I'm just going to plot 200 here. So click on Go, and that's actually processed all uh, the Markov chain Monte Carlo data. You've seen the GUI, we uh, now get uh, estimated sigma values for each of the parameters. And in the console, uh, we get the parameter output for each of the, uh, for the Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling. So say here, look, the error per molecule is 55.8 plus or minus 0.3. There's further output saved in the directory we uh, specified before. So if I look at this particular diagram, this is steps underscore sld.png, and this is the uh, scatter the insert shows the uncertainty in the scattering and density profile uh, for the Markov chain Monte Carlo process, and the uh, the orange like these solid colours represent the median of the sampling process, and the grey uh, the grey traces uh, represent the uncertainty. Now, ideally. Um, We'd want to run this process for, say, as I said, 10,000 steps and thin every 400 and probably do a lot more plot samples as well. But this isn't so bad for uh, a very short demonstration. Steps.png is a similar kind of graph, but for the reflectivity. And you see these grey traces down here. That represents the, uh, the spread of... Uh, reflectivity profiles that are consistent with the Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling. So that's the output from uh, the Markov chain Monte Carlo. And I hope you find it useful for your own purposes. Again, you get to it by MCMC, selection, pressing go, changing number of steps, temperatures, thinning and so on. So if we're going to do a production run now, we could select uh, thin every 400. Now collect, I don't know, 20 steps. Here, we're going to get a total of 20 times 200 samples. So that would be, what, uh, 4,000 um, in total. And because we're thinning every 400, the total number uh, length that it's going to take to sample is actually 20 times 400. It's going to do a total of 20 times 400 steps, but only save 20 of them. Um, lastly, I should say that we can process the chain afterwards. So after you've done the sampling, you can revisit the analysis, uh, select the chain file, and then we can experiment with changing different number, changing the thinning parameter, or changing the burn parameter, or so on. And then in that case, you can experiment with uh, what effect that they have on steps at SLD and steps.png.